I spent 100 days in modded Stardew Valley. Please subscribe, follow my Twitch, and enjoy the video. I woke up on day one to pick up my parsnip seeds and head outside to be greeted by a whole new world. I decided to explore my farm before planting my seeds, so I got to work clearing a proper path that I could follow. But I severely underestimated the sheer size of my farm. It took me until 3pm to be satisfied with my exploration, so I planted my seeds and went off to check out the town. I found a brand new house in town where I met Olivia and Victor. I then went down to Blue Moon Vineyard where I met Sophia. I then headed back to my farm and went off to bed. In the morning of day two, I watered my parsnips and cleared my farm area a little before heading into town. After buying eight bean seeds from Pierre, I petted Dusty, then headed back down to Blue Moon Vineyard, where I said hello to Sophia. I then met Andy, who owned a small farm south of mine, then finally returned to my own house and went off to bed. When day three came around, I wanted to do some serious exploration, so I took out my map to see where I could go. I started out by going to Jojomart where I found a pelican statue sitting behind it. I then headed upwards but the mines were still blocked so I checked out the above area, then headed back to my farm where I spent the rest of the day clearing and exploring before going to bed. On day 4 I wanted to meet the wizard so I wandered towards town when I met Claire walking down from the bus stop. When I arrived in town I headed down on the way to the wizard's house I stopped by at the vineyard to say hello. When I finally arrived at the wizard's house I realised how much he was out farming me. When he didn't let me into his house after all of my effort I just went home and went to bed. On day 5 I woke up to some mail from Susan saying that she was stuck up in the mountains, so I harvested my parsnips and did absolutely nothing about it. After heading into town and giving Dusty many pets, I sold my parsnips and spent the rest of the day clearing out a large square of my farm for future farming space before heading to bed. In the morning of day 6 I decided to finally do something about the woman stuck in the mountains, so after watering my crops I headed up. When I got to the mines, the mine wasn't there, so instead I kept walking and eventually found a beautiful little area containing the mine and the adventurers guild, but no farm. So I decided that it must be with the bathhouse up near the train station. Since that was still unaccessible by me, I just went home and went to bed. On day 7 I watered my crops then headed into town to say hello to the townsfolk. When I arrived I met Martin, another new NPC. I then said hello to Olivia before heading down to the beach and exploring it for new stuff before heading home and going to bed. On day 8 I didn't record, my computer hates me. All I did was fish and explore. When I left home on day 9, my parsnips were ready, so I harvested them and wandered down to Pierre's. After selling them, I bought some potatoes, which I went home and planted. I then spent the rest of the day in the mines, and at level 7 I called it a day, returned home and went to bed. Day 10 was a special day. It was the day that Nob the Cat could join me on my adventure. After watering my crops, I cleared my farm for a bit before going down to see Andy, then discovering a bridge to the east of the town. I crossed it, but there was nothing on the other side. Disappointed, I went home, cleared out my big farm cave, then went to bed. In the morning of day 11, I watered my crops and cleared out my cave before heading into town to donate some things to Gunter. After giving him everything I had in return, he gave me some cauliflower seeds, which I went home and planted. I then fished for the rest of the day before heading off to bed. On day 12, I got some mail from the wizard telling me to come to his tower, so after selling some beans to Pierre, I headed down. When I got there, he gave me some drugs, and now I can read. I then foraged for the rest of the day before clearing out a bit more of my farm, then going to bed. When day 13 came around, I wooded my crops and grabbed some stuff to donate to the community centre. But when I went into town to donate them, I realised that it was the egg festival. When I got into town, I realised that I had also forgotten to save for the strawberry seeds. So sad. But I still had the egg hunt to do, so I started it and ended up being actually beaten by Sophia. Dave was not very happy. In the morning of day 14, it was finally time for me to donate my forageables, so after watering my crops, I headed into town. After donating the ball, I unlocked a bunch of new bundles that I could complete. I then headed back to my own farm and spent the rest of the day clearing out another small chunk of my massive farm, then going to bed. On day 15, I watched the television in the morning and living off the land guy told me that it was salmonberry time, so after harvesting and watering my crops, I sold some potatoes to Pierre and began collecting. By the time night fell, I had almost 30 berries, so I went home happy with my progress. 
In the morning of day 16, I decided to spend the morning organizing my chests. After building a bunch, I color coded them, then moved my items. I then planted some potatoes before heading off to the mines to grind for the remainder of the day. When I got home, I put away all of my items, then headed off to bed. On day 17, I wooded my crops, then collected some salmon berries before heading straight to the mines with the goal of reaching level 10. I grinded all day there, only managing to reach level 10 at around 7pm. Collecting the leather boots, I exited the mines and returned home. After putting away my stuff, I went to bed. On day 18, I watered my crops and harvested some beans which I brought to Piers. After selling them, I bought some parsnip seeds then returned home to plant them. I then decided to once again enter the mines to get some copper. After reaching level 15, I called it a day and returned home, put away my stuff and went off to bed. In the morning of day 19, I wooded my crops and cleared out the cave on my farm before heading into town to say hello to some townsfolk. I then went back to my own farm with the mission to clear out another one of the huge areas of my farm, so I got to work. I ended up not finishing this section, but I got really close. I went to bed feeling very accomplished. I woke up on day 20 to rain, so I didn't have to water my crops. Instead, I went to my cave to clear it out before spending some time chopping wood and stone on my farm. I then wandered up to the caves to collect some more copper. By the time 10pm came around, I left the cave, wandered home and put away my stuff, then went to bed. On day 21, I harvested my crops, then headed into town to Pierre's to sell them. I then brought some seeds, which I went home and planted. At my farm, I realized how many geodes I had, so I grabbed them and wandered into Clint's. After getting them all opened, I donated a bunch of stuff to Gunter before heading home and clearing out my farm for the rest of the day before heading off to bed. When I left my cottage on day 22, my parsnips and potatoes were both ready, so I harvested them and sold them at Pierre's. I then decided to finish off the middle part of my farm and clear it of anything but stumps. I then picked up everything in my cave before spending the rest of the day chopping trees next to the river flowing through my farm. I then went to bed. In the morning of day 23, my cauliflowers were ready for harvest, so I grabbed them and headed into town. When I got there, I gave one of the collies to Jody before selling the rest to Pierre. I then decided to make some money and fish for the rest of the day at the beach before heading home and going to bed. On day 24, I was going to sell some crops when I was reminded that the flower dance was on, so instead I went home, put my beans in the shipping bin and headed down to the forest. I asked everyone, but no one wanted to dance with me, so I just watched from the side. I was then teleported home where I went to bed. In the morning of day 25, I wooded my crops and headed up to Robin's to order a coop. After placing it down, I was curious about the changes in the wizard's house, so I wandered down there. When I arrived, I was greeted by a massive new underground area containing so much stuff. After a quick cutscene with the wizard, I had a look around the warp hall. Seeing as none of them worked, I just went home and went to bed. On day 26, my parsnips were ready for harvest, so I grabbed them and wandered off to town. After selling them, I gave Pierre a flower for his birthday before heading back to my own farm to do some exploration. I didn't realize until now that my farm actually kept going downwards, so I had to look around that area. I then cleared out my mineral cave before going off to bed. When day 27 came around, both my kale and my beans were ready, so I harvested them and sold them at Pierre's. I then wandered back home, then up to the caves where I collected copper for the rest of the day. After reaching level 20 and getting a new sword, I went back to my farm, put away my loot, and went to bed. I left my house on day 28 to Andy, who told me to get scarecrows, even though I had some already. I then cleared out my crops since it was the last day of spring and headed into Clint's to upgrade my axe. After that, I talked with some villagers before wandering back to my farm and clearing out my mineral cave. I then spent the rest of the day in the mines before heading to bed. Day 29 was the first day of summer, so I went straight into town to buy some crops. After spending all of my very little savings on blueberry seeds, I went home to plant them. I then decided to make some money seeing as how poor I was. So I went down to the bridge in town to fish. I fished all day until going home, putting them all in my shipping bin, then going to bed. In the morning of day 30, I grabbed my geodes and headed up to Clint's to pick up my new copper axe. After collecting it, I opened up all of my geodes before donating all of the new minerals to Gunter. I then went home and planted my melon seeds that he gave me before spending the rest of the day clearing out some hardwood I found on my farm, then going to bed. 
When I left my home on day 31, Susan met me at my door saying that I should go visit her, so I did. While I was at her farm, I found a rapier next to some graves, so I picked it up. I then went down to Robin's and bought a silo before going up to Marnie's to buy two chickens, which I named Glip and Glop. I then spent the rest of the day in the mines before heading off to bed. On day 32 I realised how much of my farm I could not access because of my low level tools and I wanted to fix that, so I started the tool grind. There were a few parts to this grind, the first was to reach level 40 in the mines to start getting iron, the second was to collect iron and the final part was to upgrade my tools from normal to copper to iron. Since I only needed to upgrade my pick and my axe, the upgrading process wouldn't take too long, so I went to the mines and got grinding. On day 40 I got to level 40 after upgrading my pickaxe to copper, I then got grinding iron for the next three days until on day 43 I upgraded my axe and on day 45 I collected my axe and upgraded my pick. All I needed to do now was wait. And finally on day 47 I got my new steel pick and went to bed thinking of all the places on my farm that I could unlock using my new tool. In the morning of day 48 I left my home excitedly to do some exploring so I wooded my crops and got exploring. First I found this abandoned house behind a whole lot of logs and when I got there it was empty. I then broke the big log in front of the staircase and above it was a cool lookout area. I then cleared out some large rocks for the rest of the day before heading to bed. Day 49 was just such a cool day. I started out by watering my crops then clearing out more of my farm down south when I uncovered a boat and when I got in it, it transported me to a quarry full of ores and stone. I was just so hyped about this discovery that I spent the rest of the day clearing the whole thing out. I was then just about to go to bed when I spotted some logs through the forest so I wandered down and found a beautiful hot spring that restored my health. I was just amazed. When I left my home on day 50, I was greeted by Robin. She said that she was doing a checkup on the old shed that I had found yesterday. After looking around, she told me that if I got her resources, she could fix it. 600 stone, 150 hardwood, 50 iron bars, and 20 battery packs. It was a lot, but doable. So I got straight to work upgrading my foraging so that I could unlock lightning rods. I foraged for the rest of the day before heading to bed. In the morning of day 51, I patted my chickens, then went straight down to start foraging. After looking around the map for the entire day, I came away with quite a lot of stuff, so I went to bed hoping that I would level up. I didn't. On day 52, after another long, hard day of foraging in the woods, I finally leveled up in foraging, unlocking the lightning rod recipe. I could finally get battery packs. I woke up excitedly in the morning of day 53 to craft a bunch of lightning rods. After placing them all I dropped off my hardwood and stone then ran up to the mines to collect both bat wings and iron. After grinding in the mines for the entire day I returned home and went to bed. On day 54, I harvested my crops and made some lightning rods before heading straight down to the mines. After grinding there the entire day, I came away with quite a lot of bat wings and iron which I crafted into more lightning rods. I then placed them down and waited until almost midnight to go to bed. In the morning of day 55, I collected 10 beautiful battery packs from my lightning rods and stored them safely in my chest. I then went back up to the mines as I still needed 50 iron bars to complete the shed. So I grinded there the entire day once again and came away with a solid amount. I then went home, put them in my furnaces and went to bed. On day 56 I went straight up to the mines. When I was there I realised how long getting 50 iron bars would take to get so I decided to dedicate some days to straight grinding for iron. So I got mining and in the morning of day 61 I collected my last smelted bar and gave it to the shed. The only thing I needed now was 5 battery packs which I could get during the next storm. I was proud of my efforts. In the morning of day 62, seeing as I didn't know the secret quarry existed until a while into my playthrough, I thought that there must be other places that I had missed, so after patting my chickens, I got exploring. And after not looking for long, I found an entrance to a huge new area. After looking around, I found the Audra Vineyard. It looked abandoned, and when I had a look inside, it was empty and overgrown. I then had a look around the rest of the area, but it was relatively empty. I then went home and went to bed. 
On day 63, after patting my chickens, I decided that I wanted the sewer key, so I grabbed all of my minerals, gems, and geodes, then headed off to Clint. I had so many geodes that it took me the entire day to open them all, but by the end, I had donated a solid amount. I then headed back home where I threw some mayo in the shipping bin and went to bed. On day 64, I harvested my cranberries and patted my chickens before heading down to collect blackberries since they were in season. I walked around most of the map grabbing blackberries and by the time night fell I had a bunch. I then wandered back home and went to bed. In the morning of day 65, I watered all of my crops, then headed straight up to the mines. I ended up getting all the way down to level 90, unlocking the Obsidian Edge, which was just 10 times better than the sword that I was currently using. After grabbing it, I went home, put some gold in my furnaces, and went off to bed. On day 66, I once again went up to the mines after watering my crops. I grinded all day and only made it to level 100 at 1.30 in the morning. I then got knocked out at 2pm next to the mountain lake. Day 67 was finally the stormy day that I had been waiting for, so I went outside, patted my chickens and went straight up to the mines. After staying there for the entire day, I got to level 105. I then went home, put away my stuff and excitedly went to bed, anticipating all of my battery packs in the morning. Day 68 was finally the day that I could finish my shed, so I grabbed my battery packs and headed straight to it. After depositing them into the chest, nothing happened. I took a look around, but still nothing happened. So I thought that the cutscene must be tomorrow, so I spent the rest of the day clearing out my farm, then going to bed. On day 69, I was walking around Jojomart when I came across the bridge that I had found at the very start of my journey. But this time, when I tried to cross, there was something on the other side. It was just a massive field filled with grass. I found a sparkling wizard's tower, and when I went onto the teleport pad, I got teleported into the wizard's warp hall. I then returned home, but the sparkling wizard didn't want to let me in. I then found a train station where there was a machine that would teleport me to the station in Stardew Valley. I then returned home and went went to bed. In the morning of day 70, my shed was complete and I wanted to fill the upper floor greenhouse with sprinklers, so after doing my chores I headed straight down to the mines. After grinding there on level 60 for the entire day, I returned home, put away my stuff and went to bed. And on day 71, I went up to Pierre's to buy some seeds for my shed. I then went up to the station because there was a train coming past. The train was literally infinite. It was so long. Eventually, when it ended, I decided to follow it through the tunnel, but it had just disappeared. Strange. I then got an introduction to my new shed by Robin and planted my cranberries for the rest of the night before heading to bed. Day 72 was the Stardew Valley Fair, so after watering my crops, I headed straight into town. I then set up my display, but I ended up coming second. I wondered if I should have just put up Mayor Lewis's pants. After collecting my 500 star points, I betted them until I had 5,000, then sold out the store. I then tried to bet once more, but lost everything. I then teleported home and went off to bed. On day 73, I wooded my crops and checked on my cranberries before running up to the mines with the goal of reaching level 110, and by the time night fell, I had got there collecting the space boots. I then ran home, put some gold in my furnaces, and went off to bed. In the morning of day 74, I harvested my cranberries before going straight up to the mines with the final goal to complete it and get the skull key. After hours of grinding in there, I finally got the staircase down, reaching the bottom. I had done it. After grabbing the key, I exited the cave and wandered home. When I went to bed that night, I felt very accomplished. On day 75, I wooded my crops, then I realized something. I had completely forgotten about the community center. I had only done two bundles in 75 days, so I grabbed everything and went up to the community center. I completed a bunch of bundles and ended up completing the entire boiler room, unlocking the minecart. I then went down to the beach and repaired the bridge before grabbing the forageables on the other side. I then went home and went to bed. On day 76, I watered my crops and patted my chickens before heading down to say hello to Andy and Sophia. I then went up to the Adventurer's Summit to see if I could use the boat yet, but I couldn't. I then walked down to Cindersat Forest to see if I could find any more secrets down there, and after not finding anything, I just went home. 
In the morning of day 77, I watered my crops before deciding to fish in the town for a bit. After staying there for a while, I got bored and moved on to the beach where I foraged for a bit then got fishing. I fished there for the rest of the day before heading home, putting my fish in the shipping container and heading off to bed. When I woke up on day 78, I had a mission to get a big barn and unlock goats for some serious money, and this process had a couple of steps that I had already outlined. First, I needed to get a barn, then I needed to make two silos, and finally upgrade my barn, so I headed straight up to Robbins to order it. On day 81, my barn was finished its construction, so I went up to Robbins to buy a silo. Day 84 was the day that my first silo was finished, so I went up to Robbins and once again bought another silo. On day 86, my second silo was finished its construction, so I went up to Robbins, but she wasn't there, so I came back the next day and ordered the upgrade for my barn. All I needed to do now was wait, then buy my animals. And finally, on day 89, my barn was finished its upgrade, and I could go to Marnie's to buy some livestock. I bought two cows and six goats, which I named Bonk, Blonk, Clonk, Stonk, Clonk, and Monk. Normal names. In the morning of day 90, I patted my chickens before heading straight to Clint's with my geodes. After opening them all, I donated all of the new stuff that I had gotten to Gunter. I then counted up all of my donated items and the total was 51, only 9 items off getting the sewer key. So I went and wandered around the southern area of the map for a while looking for artifact spots before heading off to bed. On day 91, I patted all of my animals before heading off to my shed. When I got there, I headed upstairs and all of my cranberries were ready for harvest, so I grabbed them all. I then excitedly ran up to Pierre's and sold them for 35,000 gold. I decided to not spend all of my newfound riches immediately, instead I went up to the mines to grind iron for the rest of the day. I then returned home and went to bed. Day 92 was the ice fishing festival, so after patting my goats, I wandered down. When I got there, I had a chat to some of the townsfolk before starting the fishing competition. After two minutes of hardcore fishing, I came out first with five fish, winning a bunch of tackle and a hat. An actually useful prize. I then got teleported home, and with nothing else to do, I just went to bed. In the morning of day 93, I collected my metal bars before heading down to tend to my animals. I then went up to Marnie's to buy an auto collector, but she wasn't at her house, so instead I went up to the mines to collect iron so that I would have lots of sprinklers when winter ended. After grinding there for the entire day, I took the minecart home, put away all of my loot, then went off to bed. On day 94, I patted my chickens when I realized that I didn't have any heaters in either my coop or my barn, so I went over to Marnie's and bought two heaters and a milk bucket. I then returned back to my farm, placed the heaters and milked my goats and cows. I then decided to donate my last dwarf scroll to Gunter in return he gave me the Dwarvish translation guide, which I used to purchase explosives. Finally, something useful. On day 95, I tended to my animals before crafting and placing three tappers to get some maple syrup. I then cleared out my mineral cave before heading up to the Adventurer's Guild where I met Alicia, another adventurer. After having a chat with her, she decided to teleport away, so I went over to Grampleton Fields where I cut grass for the rest of the day. I then took a teleport pad back to the wizard's house. From there, I just returned home and went off to bed. In the morning of day 96, I tended to all of my animals before grabbing some resources and heading up to Robbins to buy a stable. After placing it down, I went up to Clint's to open some geodes, then donated some stuff to Gunter. I then spent the rest of the day clearing out my greenhouse as all of my cranberries were ready for harvest. I threw them in the shipping bin, then went to bed. On day 97, I patted my goats before grabbing some essence and heading off to the wizard's tower. I gave him both of them, then went back to my own farm to clear out my quarry of stones before deciding to fish on my farm for the rest of the day. I fished near the boat under the waterfall and above the waterfall before throwing my fish in the shipping bin, then going to bed. On day 98, I milked my goats, then went down to Marnie's to contemplate whether or not I should buy the auto collector. I didn't, so instead I returned to my farm to name my new horse, Nobby. I then rode Nobby into town to donate some things to Gunter, and when I counted how many I had given, it turned out that I had given 60. So I rode back to my house in anticipation of tomorrow morning. 
Gunter wasn't at my door on day 99. I was very confused. Instead, I tended to my animals, then went down to the mines to purchase more explosives. I then used those explosives to get stone and other resources very fast. Eventually, I got the box that popped up saying that the night market had started, so I left the mines and rode over. I checked all of the stock, and the only thing I found that I wanted was the giant Christmas tree, so I bought it and placed it down on my own farm. I then went to bed. And it was finally day 100. All of these days had led up to this very moment. I walked outside and decided to spend some money. And I had 50 grand to spare so I could get basically anything I wanted. I started out by heading to Robbins and bought a telephone and a calendar. I then went up to the Adventurers Guild and made the biggest purchase of my entire playthrough. I bought the $25,000 sword, the Lava Katana. With my epic new sword, I returned home and went to bed. Thank you all so much for watching, but before you go, I'd like to shout out Flakely. He's my online friend and he has a very small channel that he puts lots of effort into, so if you have the chance, you should go definitely check him out. Bye. Subscribe. Follow my Twitch. Okay, goodbye. Why are you still here?